I believe in miracles because I believe in God. This is the message this ministry is taking to the world through signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome everyone to the program today. So glad you could join us. I'm Reverend Chris Mockmer. I'll be your host for the program. We have for you some good music and singing. Also a sermon that I preached that friend, I trust this topic can really help you in your walk with the Lord. This message, the theme is something that everyone deals with in this life. And we must know how to deal with it in order to receive God's best and be victorious. Also, you'll hear a fantastic miracle that someone received through this Jesus ministry. But first, we have for you the Jesus Trio. Listen. Just the way they said we would The mother and her son And in our hearts we knew the light had come To look upon The Savior of the world Messiah, Lord of Lords The redeeming of mankind The everlasting Father And whosoever will come shall drink and live Hallelujah souls of men and all the world will hear his great name the son of man has come for me at last my soul has found its rest and this world i've known shall never be the same souls shall live again and every knee shall bow and tongue confess he's prince of peace the bread of life rose of sharon man of light emmanuel redeemer from our sin he's wonderful counselor the everlasting father Whosoever will come shall drink and live.
Prince of Peace, the Bread of Life, Rose of Sharon, He's the Man of Life. The topic tonight is something everyone deals with, everyone faces. Saint, sinner, no matter how close you are to the Lord or how far off you are, people deal with this, but they deal with it in different ways. And this topic, in this message, the Lord instructs how to deal with it the right way, the Jesus way. And what is the topic tonight? One word, worry. Worry. This world functions today in a constant state of worry. Think about it. Worried about global warming. Worried about the virus that's out there, the coronavirus. Even in our country today, the stock market, it's always about worry. The stock market plummets for fear. Fear of this, fear of that. Worry here, worry there, worry everywhere. Worry fills the news. It manifests in people all around us. They worry about their past, the present, or the future. They worry if all their needs are going to be supplied. They'll even worry about what people think or say about them. And unfortunately, many children of God will worry whether or not the Lord actually loves them and cares for them, and that's sad. Now, Jesus said in the last days, the days that we live in now, men's hearts would fail them for fear, looking at what's coming upon the face of this earth. Fear is the spirit of this age. And children of God, members of the bridal company, must not allow the spirit of this age to contaminate them in any way, shape, or form. After all, child of God, you have no reason to worry. If you're a true child of God, spirit-filled, you're on your way to heaven. God in his word have, has provided promises to cover every problem, every situation, every care of life you could ever face. And Jesus has provided a way of escape from the tribulation that will come upon the earth by way of the rapture. If anyone should fear and worry... It should be the sinner and the backslider. Now, the will of God is for his children to be at peace. Unfortunately, so many worry so much that when sinners cross their path and they talk to and they witness and they look at children of God, they don't see the benefit in serving the Lord. And this makes a poor Jesus witness. And that's not good. No. People all over the world, they're searching for peace. But they're looking in all the wrong places. They're looking for it in alcohol and drugs. They're trying to find joy and entertainments, money and possessions. But it's, it's just emptiness and it's short-lived. It doesn't last. Others find themselves in such a miserable condition, seemingly have tried everything, they can't find peace. So... They commit suicide as a last resort, thinking this will bring peace. But all that does, committing suicide, is bring everlasting torment in hell. Child of God, always remember, wherever you go, that you possess within you that which people are looking for and searching for. You possess abundant life and eternal life. And many today, they would never consider coming to church or opening up a Bible in search of the freedom and the peace they're looking for. And that's why Jesus said, you are to be a light, a Jesus shining light to the world, like a city set on a hill, all lit up. Think about it if you were out in a dark desert somewhere and you look up on a hill in the middle of the night and there's a city shining bright. This light that Jesus speaks of is the power of the Holy Ghost within you. The fruits of the Spirit, 
that are to be produced in you. And many honest hearts are out there wandering in the night of sin, looking and searching for a refuge. They want deliverance. And if they see you lit up by the power of the Holy Ghost, they will be drawn to you. But the devil does his best to worry people, to rob them, seeking to dim their light so that those weary travelers needing help and searching for help, they're subject to pass you by with such a dim light in your life. And they may be lost to hell forevermore. The definition of worry, have you ever looked up that definition? It says a lot. And there's two definitions of worry I want to share with you tonight. The definition of worry, one is give way to anxiety or unease. Another definition of worry, allow one's mind to dwell on difficulty or trouble. Now, do these definitions descri describe your mind? What do you give way to in your mind? What do you allow your mind to dwell on? If your mind gives way to the Word of God, if you allow your mind to dwell on God's Word and His promises, you will have a sound mind full of power and love. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 1 John 4.18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, God is love, the Bible says. He is love. So he that feareth lives in a state of worry. They're not made perfect in God. When troubles arise and needs present themselves, what do you dwell on? Where does your mind go and stay? Well, the Bible tells you what to do in Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. A mind of peace is a mind stayed upon God and his word. A mind of peace is the result of a heart full of God's love. How do I know this? You see, a person will not trust God like they should, unless they love God like they should. You're not going to trust someone completely if you don't love them completely. Matthew 22, 37. How are we to love God? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. When you love God like this, there is no room in you for anything unlike God. The Bible is a faith book. As you study the Word, keep your mind stayed on the Word and become a doer of the Word, divine faith increases within you. Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The increase of faith within you, it will go into operation according to the love that is within you. So if little faith is working in you, it's because you have little love. You don't have much divine love in operation. It says in Galatians chapter 5, 6, but faith worketh by love. That's how it operates, through love. When a child of God is constantly struggling with fear and worry, they really don't believe God is going to take care of them. Not really. No. Else, why worry? Why be in a state of fear? This lack of trust, it ties God's hands. It makes matters worse, not better, worse. People think if they worry about something, if they dwell on the problem or a situation, somehow it makes it better. It doesn't. It only makes the matter worse. And God cannot move. When you worry, you tie God's hands. He's unable to move and bless you, help you, and deliver you. If worry is a constant companion in your life, face it. You're not made perfect in love. 
Neither are you living by faith. Now, worry comes to all of us. But some people, they're always worried about something. Sometimes a problem, the situation face arises in their life, and they just can't get it out of their mind. Other people, worry is such a part of them, such a part of their spirit, they worry when there's nothing to worry about. Sometimes they worry, and if they would tell the truth about the situation, they don't even know why they're worried. They worry because it's become a habit. And that's really not a good place to be. Some Christians believe and declare they trust in God, but then God allows them to face certain trials and tribulations, and then suddenly what lies within, deep down within, comes out. Love, faith, and obedience, or fear, doubt, and disobedience. Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Live by faith. Some Christians think they're going great using faith. That's not enough. The just live by faith. You have faith, child of God. Everyone's given a measure of faith. You have it. So when the troubles, the trials, and the tribulations come, what do you do? Faith to what? Faith. Or is it faith to doubt? When those troubles hit, is it faith to fear and worry? Faith to unbelief. The righteousness is, of God is revealed and manifested through God's children when they go faith to faith. And they never, never leave the realm of faith. Learn what it means to live by faith. In the power of the blood of Jesus, live by faith in the word, the promises of God. How often do you study the Sermon on the Mount? Matthew 5 through 7. The greatest sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. How often do you study it? Do you seek to live by this sermon? Do you seek to pattern your life by the teachings in this sermon? Now, in this sermon, Jesus instructs us, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry. Yet so many Christians waste so much time and energy in doing that very thing that Jesus said do not do. And it leaves them exhausted and unproductive for the Lord today. Think about that. How many times have you been burdened down with mind battles about tomorrow, something that's never even come up yet, and you're just absolutely worthless to the Lord today? You feel like crawling in bed, throwing the covers over your head and not even coming out. What kind of Jesus light is that for the Lord today? How profitable are you unto the Lord today? In this sermon, Jesus pointed to nature, reminding us of the grass that grows and the flowers. Grass grows everywhere. Flowers grow everywhere. And so much of it's beautiful that the Lord has dressed flowers and grass in this way. And even though they are only here for a short time, the Lord takes great care. Think of the birds, these little animals. They don't store up in barns, but every morning they get up, they go chirping and looking for food. And God provides them food day after day after day throughout their lifetime. Now, if God is so mindful of grass, of flowers, of birds who have no soul, how much more mindful will he be of you, O oh child of his? When you learn to live by that which Jesus taught and provided under the new covenant, you will live in peace and you will receive answers to your prayers. John 15, 7, Jesus said, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will 
and it shall be done unto you. Such a simple promise, but yet so underutilized by children of God in the kingdom. Child of God, how often do you receive answers to your prayers? Don't get me wrong, there's nothing, nothing amiss with going to a pastor to receive prayer. There's nothing wrong with joining in prayer with a brother and sister in Christ. The Bible says the prayer of faith would save the sick and God will raise them up. The Bible also says if two or three will agree on any one thing touching heaven, it shall be done. Nothing wrong with that. But just remember, when a need arises in your life, remember your divine heritage in the Word of God. Claim your heritage. Use it. Hebrews 4.16, let us therefore come boldly, boldly, not sheepishly, boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Grace is God's favor. And it doesn't get any better than that for a child of God. Do you have enough divine love and enough divine faith operating, working within you, that you can boldly declare, Father, you always hear me? Without the least bit of hesitation and doubt? Do you have that much love and faith working, operating in you? Remember, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, how according to the power that worketh in us. In us, working. Working in us. And that's been the stumbling block for so many children of God for so many years. Depending on power from without, not within, and the power that is within is dormant and quenched. The power is not working, therefore God cannot work. Each time you receive an answer to your prayer, your faith in God grows stronger, your love for God runs deeper, and you take on greater living reality in divinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Receiving answers to prayer is a wonderful experience. However, be forewarned because at times receiving answers to prayer will also test and grow your patience because many times you will have to wait upon the Lord for the answer to come. It's not always going to come immediately. You have to wait. You have to wait God's way. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything, Paul's saying. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. There are times answers to your prayer requires patience. Make your requests known unto the Lord in all love and faith believing, then close the case. Stand on the promises and rejoice in the Lord. Knowing he's heard you, he's faithful to his word, and God will move. You don't see to believe. That's not how the kingdom operates here on earth. It's not seeing to believe. God heard you. Seeing to believe, God moved. No, by faith you rejoice. By faith you believe to see. As you patiently wait, you thank God. You praise Him for what He has promised. You praise Him for what He's already done in your life, again and again and again, for all that He's done. And then you praise Him because He's worthy. He's worthy because of who He is. Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. 
Study the armor of God in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Why? Because you're going to need it. You're going to need it between now and rapture ground. Know what it means to put it on each day, how to use it, and then stand. Stand ready to face victoriously whatever life throws at you. Jesus warned you would not have it easy in this life. In this world you shall have tribulation. So when troubles come, what do you do? Give way to anxiety? Focus on your troubles? Let fear dictate your words and actions? You know, your mind is like a cup. It can only hold so much. But you are responsible for what goes in the cup. What dwells in that cup? You can choose to dwell upon troubles, persecutions, imaginations, thoughts of fear, doubt, and negativity running over, or with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can serve your mind cup, the Word of God, all the many blessings God has bestowed upon you throughout your life, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But the cup is your responsibility, not God's. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth its, itself against the knowledge of God. Now, how are you going to do that if you don't know the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is the Word of God. And if you don't know the Word, how do you know what thoughts to sift? And keep in what thoughts to sift and cast out. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. People will exhaust themselves, literally. They will exhaust themselves emotionally and mentally by allowing imaginations of all kinds to fill their mind. I've seen it in the ministry over the years. That something bad is about to happen. Something's going to get them. Fear of the future. Fear that someone doesn't like them. Fear of this, fear of that, worry, 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 and it's all imagination. And nine times out of ten, what they're imagining is unfounded and untrue. Just a mind battle from the enemy. Wasted time. The devil will play on your imagination, seeking to rob you of your peace of mind, to rob you of your Jesus witness, to rob you of blessings from God, and to rob you of a strong foundation in Christ. Your thought life, according to the Word, is to be kept under subjection to Christ. So any thought or imagination that will contradict itself against the Word of God, you're to cast it out. Not dwell on it, not think it over, you are to immediately cast it out. Think about the early church how strong they were in the face of the greatest adversity. Why, the Apostle Paul wrote of the early church and what they faced in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Then in Hebrews 11, 36 through 38, And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Then in Romans 8, Beginning in verse 35, Paul wrote, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. What made the early church so powerful and victorious in the midst of such great adversity? They lived by faith. They lived by faith. 
It could be in no other way. In that day, if you were going to be a part of the church, it was either live by faith or draw back from God. It was live by faith or get out of the church. Everyone and everything had to be put on the altar of sacrifice. And by this, God's hands were untied completely. The early church was willing to live for the sake of Christ or die for the sake of Christ. They lived to please God. They died to please God. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. The blood, the word, and self was on the altar completely. Living by faith. If you will be a true servant of the Lord who is going to work for him and be ready for the master's return, you must stop letting people, the devil, tribulations, circumstances distract you and worry you and rob you. Be what Jesus intended you to be, regardless of what this world throws at you. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Not looking at people, not looking at circumstances, tribulations, looking at Jesus. And when you look at Jesus, that means you're focused on the word and the power of divine blood. When you look at Jesus, that means you've lost sight of all the distractions in your spirit. When you look at Jesus, you will always keep him before you. You will always keep your divine heritage before you, remembering always who you are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, the spirit itself beareth, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. You will suffer, O child of God. You will suffer, O joint heir with Christ. You will suffer if you hope to glory with him one day. Jesus provided the overcoming power of divine blood for children of God to use for themselves and to use for others. Child of God, are you conscious of your divine blood heritage? Are you ever conscious of your divine blood privileges? Do you have living reality in the divine blood of Jesus? You know, it grieves the Godhead when we as children of God waste the blood. It grieves the whole Godhead. It grieves Jesus, the Son, because of the great price that he paid, sacrificing that blood so you could be a partaker of it and use it. It grieves the Holy Spirit because he was sent to this earth to occupy your temple to help you use the blood, to teach you how to use the blood. And it grieves the Father because souls are set free through the blood. And when you waste the blood, souls are being lost. They're not being won. As an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ on earth, you have a heritage of divine blood power, Holy Ghost power, and all the promises in the Word of God. What a heritage. You lack nothing. Absolutely nothing, so why worry? But how much of your heritage have you claimed? How much of your heritage is working in your daily life? If you don't claim a heritage, it may rightfully belong to you, but if you don't step forward and claim it as yours, it's lost. It's as if you don't have a heritage. Know what's yours in Christ. Keep it ever before you. Never lose sight of it and use it. 
Use it in all faith day after day. There is no defeat in Christ Jesus for those who use the blood, live by faith in the word of God, and love not their lives to the death. There's no defeat. The devil can't defeat that formula. He can't defeat it. All of hell in this world can't defeat that. How much of your divine heritage have you wasted? Living in worry, despair, and depression. You know, no one on earth endured more than Jesus. He was the man of many sorrows. He was acquainted with grief. Yet, you never re read that it's recorded in the four Gospels that Jesus walked around in mental torment. That's because Jesus used the blood. He used the written word. He was anointed by the Holy Ghost with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. He used his divine heritage, and he was victorious. Not only for himself, he was victorious for those who were in need. Friend, when Jesus returns, what will he find you doing? When he comes on rapture day, will you be wasting the blood? Living in a constant state of worry, fear, and torment? Living in your feelings? Or will he find you using the blood? Living by faith in the word of God and anointed by the Holy Ghost to be a blessing to God's kingdom and to win souls for the Lord. Child of God, know your heritage. Never live beneath your heritage. And then you can be, as the Apostle Paul wrote, more than a conqueror through Christ. But friend, if you're watching, if you're listening, and there's any sin, any disobedience in your life, anything you're saying, you're doing, that you know God would be displeased with, the blood is not yours to use. Because blood and sin do not mix. Divine blood and sin do not mix. It's one or the other. You can be set free. You can yield to the blood right now in this prayer that I'm about to pray. And by faith, the blood of Jesus will wash away all those sins, all those disobedience in your life. And you can be born again, made brand new through Jesus Christ in the power of divine blood. Friends, say this prayer with me right now, and everyone in this congregation say it. Say, oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Father, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the divine blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus, and amen. And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus is yours. And the word of God tells us that when Jesus went to the cross, it was not only salvation for the soul, but healing for the body. It was a twofold atonement. There's power in the blood of Jesus that will heal your body. Because the word of God tells us, with his stripes, we are healed. Oh, what a price that he paid so that you could be made whole right now. And if you're watching and you're in pain and you're sick, you're, you're diseased, afflicted in body, friend, there's power in the blood of Jesus to deliver you. The Bible says when divine blood walked this earth, Jesus healed all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. But he didn't heal all manner of people, only those that believed. Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. Believe upon the blood of Jesus and its healing power for you right now. Jesus said a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Friend, I'm the Lord's believer. Put your hand against mine on the screen. This is a form of laying on of hands. And you who are listening, by radio, put your hand on your listening device. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick in body, those who are in need of a miracle. Lord, they're looking to you right now, to the power 
in the divine blood of Jesus. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let that virtue, that healing virtue flow to them now, Lord, and make them well, make them whole, make them a testimony for your honor and glory in the name of Jesus, and amen. Now, friend, watch every sign of improvement. Give God the honor, the praise, and the glory, and let us know what God did for you. We'd love to hear about the testimony of the delivering power in the blood and how it moved for you. You can write to us, send us an email, send us your testimony through social media, however you choose to do it. We'd love to hear from you. But now you need the Holy Ghost. It's promised unto you. The gift of the Holy Ghost will come to you once you've received the gift of salvation. Both are a gift from God. Reach out and accept it now. Get off to yourself. I'm going to call the anointing down upon you to receive the Holy Ghost. And friend, praise the Lord. And as you praise the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And when it does, the Holy Ghost will come in. And when he comes into you, he will take over your tongue. Those praises will change into another language. He will speak through you, signifying he has baptized you. It's the initial evidence according to Acts 2.4. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call the anointing down upon this people tonight. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Keep praising the Lord and don't stop, friend, till the Holy Ghost comes in. God bless you. Do you have a desire to learn more about God's Word? Maybe you're a preacher, youth leader, or just a student of God's Word. Let me encourage you to sign up for our free online Bible college courses. These courses are organized with the latest software and are based on the King James Version Bible, plus the many books written by Reverend Ernest Angley. The courses are self-paced and learning friendly. You are provided with detailed feedback on your progress. Some students elect to seek certificates, which are awarded to those passing certain courses. These online courses can be taken at your location and at your pace. See ErnestAngley.org for details and sign up. Remember 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Did you ever consider what you owe God for your life? From the day you were born, He wanted you to accept His glorious and eternal gift, Jesus Christ, plus many physical and financial gifts. Stop for a minute and consider, will you honor His love gifts through your offerings and ties to this ministry? Every day and every hour, we work to bless others everywhere. Please join us and let God's smile be upon your life. Hi, I'm Reverend Steve Millar and I'm with Lola McElroy. And Lola has been a member of our church for almost 50 years now, right Lola? Mm -hmm. Well, what a huge blessing to have you on the program. And Lola, how did you find Grace Cathedral? Well, uh, one night um, I was home by myself. I had uh, not too long got out of the hospital for a nervous condition. Mm -hmm. And I turned on the, the TV and I saw this church and I saw people falling. And because um, I had been in a lot of other churches. And so um, I asked the Lord, I said, is this for real? Mm -hmm. I said, too many people play with you, God. I have to know if this is real, you know, and um, so after it was over and everything, we got the, uh, got the phone number and the address. And so when my husband came home from work, I told him about it. And so uh, that uh, week, my uh, father and uh, mother-in-law and my brother, and we all came, uh, came to uh, Grace uh, Cathedral. On so Canton this was Road. your first time? Yes. And, and first time for all, all yes, the whole all group of, of you? Yeah, right. We, so we, you really didn't know what to experience no. besides seeing uh, the service What's, on television? Exactly, exactly. And uh, so anyway, we, you know, listened to the service and everything. And so anyway, I was in that middle aisle and Reverend had called us up to say the sinner's prayer. 
And uh, I remember saying, oh God, save my soul. Mm -hmm. And that's all I remember, <laughs> okay? And when I came to my father-in-law- So you went down in the spirit. Right, which I didn't know it was a spirit. I right. didn't know uh, what it was. So you came to, and you, what did you do? Well, I, I stood up and uh, uh, with my father-in-law and my uh, husband helped me up off the floor. And I put my hand over my eyes to see if I seen anybody else laying out. I didn't mm -hmm. see nobody else <laughs> laying out. I was like, well, okay. So whatever. This was a unique experience for right, you. Right, right, right. Because I didn't know what had happened or whatever. And um, and then I kind of tried to justify it. It was a lot of people. Maybe I got too hot and I passed out. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of left it at that. You know? And so I didn't think no more about it until we was going home. And my uh, brother said, sis, said you're not acting like you were when we uh, came up. You know, I'm, well, what do you mean? I thought I was acting normal, whatever. And uh, and then it dawns on me, and I said, June, when I passed out, I said, the Lord healed me, you know? Mm -hmm. and From that nervous condition. Yeah, from my nervous condition, yes. And uh, that was it. And, uh, and I, uh, I never took any more medication. That was mm -hmm. it. That was it for me. God healed mm -hmm. you. God healed me. And, and that it, was my first miracle. That's yes. A, that's a wonderful miracle. Now, you have another miracle that I want you to tell about, you know, and it's about your breast cancer miracle. Okay. And so in um, 85, I got uh, uh, cancer of the breast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so anyway, um, I had uh, had uh, went to specialists and uh, anyway, the... Oh, he had felt said some the, pain or something? Oh, in yeah, breast? I had that, the pain, that, but, you know. That's how you knew something was wrong. Was wrong, wrong yes, yeah. and I uh, felt some lumps and stuff. So I went to the to, uh, specialist. specialist, and uh, he said that, uh, you know, uh, I had lumps in my breast and stuff, and he said that. Now did he take x-rays then? Yes, okay. he took uh, the x-rays and stuff. And uh, so anyway, he uh, examined and all mm -hmm. this stuff, and he said that uh, I would have to have both of them taken off. Both your breasts. Breasts taken mm -hmm. off. And when he said that, I was up off of that table. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, where's my purse? Where's my clothes? I'm out of here. And he said, well, we're going to call uh, the hospital. I said, don't you call none for me because I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. And I meant it. <laughs> I was yeah. out that door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, we do believe in good doctors and good medicine, but it's always up to the individual. Right. And in, in your case, you just you just wanted to go the way of the Lord and, yes. and you just, you weren't comfortable losing both no, your breasts. Uh -uh. No, So, so did you go get prayer or what yeah, happened? Yeah, so anyway, um, on a, a Friday, I knew that Reverend was gonna be here because that's the only time, because he was traveling, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, I came up on a Friday night and got into prayer line and uh, Reverend prayed for me and he said, uh, put out your hands and he would anoint my hands and put them on my breast and, and I fell under the Holy Spirit and when I got up, I said, Lord, I will give you the honor, the praise and the glory and that was uh, it. And so we uh, went home and I just thanked him every day, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, healing me. And in the, uh, two weeks, the pain was gone. Okay, I was mm -hmm. like, okay. So you're looking for every sign of improvement yes, and you're yes, seeing them now yes, and, that, and that's yes, wonderful. Yes. They would, did, they, did he keep on giving you more signs? Yes, and so anyway, uh, I kept praying and believing God and the next thing you know, the lumps were all gone, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt around and everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. That was two weeks later, you uh -huh. know, they were all gone and I knew I was healed. I knew it. And, uh, but I didn't tell my, my husband or, or my daughter because she's an RN and I knew because they would probably say, you know, I have to go to the hospital and I knew I wasn't going there. Mm -hmm. So you didn't want to deal with no, all that? No, no, I wasn't okay. going to deal with it. And so anyway, I um, um, just kept it to myself, didn't tell my husband, didn't tell my daughter. And then uh, uh, 85, Reverend was going to the Holy Land and I knew I wanted to go to the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. And so I got uh, ready to go to the Holy Land and stuff. I knew I was fine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, went over there and, and uh, stuff. And so later on, uh, that, this was a year later, <laughs> <laughs> I told uh, my husband, and then, and then I made a mistake telling my daughter. 
And she's like, so what did they say? Oh, my, uh, my daughter, she's already in. She said, mom, have you had it checked out? I said, no, no I, I know I'm fine, <laughs> you know? And she said, well, mom, let's have it checked out. I said, oh, okay, you know? And so anyway, she calls it, uh, the specialist, uh, you know, and we make appointment, we go up and everything. And uh, he uh, takes x-rays and stuff, you know, and when he took the x-rays and, and stuff, he was so shocked. He's like, wait a minute, Miss McRoy. He said, let me get the one that I took last year. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he went back there and got that, uh, the x-rays for what he took from last year. And he put them side by side. And he showed my daughter. He said, now look at your mother with the cancer in both breasts. And he said, now look at her enlarged heart. He said, which I did not tell her. He said, cancer was enough to devastate her. So he said, I didn't want to devastate her anymore. And, but he said, now look at the one I have just taken. No sign of cancer. My heart was completely normal, and I've been fine ever since. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And so your daughter was probably shocked. Yes, she was. And the doctor was probably so, shocked. Oh, he was. That's why he said, wait and, a minute, I got to go get the, the x-ray. <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And isn't that what it's all about? Thanking yes. Jesus for your miracle? Yes. And then telling others about your miracle? Yes. You yes. know, this is a, a wonderful testimony, and I just love how God moved for you in a great way, and you could share it with the people today. Yes. You know, well, thank you for being on the show. Thank and you. And I just want to let everybody know that, you know, you, I just want you to focus on you receiving your miracle, and you can come to Grace Cathedral and be a blessing and receive your miracle, just like Lola. But now at this time, I want you to be blessed by a song. So listen to this song and be blessed in a great way.
I love that message in Jay Lana's song. And friend, if you enjoy our good music and singing, well, I want to encourage you to become a subscriber to the Ernest Angley Ministries YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, do ring the bell because each time you will be notified of new content. And every week we're adding more and more new content, including music videos, song videos, also sermons, different episodes of the Ernest Angley Hour, also recordings of our live stream services at Grace Cathedral. Just so much we have to offer that can bless you any time of the day or night, you can watch it. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. We have so many things of interest that can be a blessing to you. And friend, if you have the opportunity, we'd like to invite you to be with us in our services at Grace Cathedral. Every weekend we have services and you're welcome to join us. We have the Friday night service at 7 p.m. Good music and singing, also a sermon that will feed your soul and bless you in your walk with the Lord. And if you are in need of prayer, all you have to do is tell an usher and they will assist you in, in how to receive prayer. Then Sunday we have two services. We have the morning service at 10 a.m with more good music and singing, also a message that will bless you in a great way. And then Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we have a wonderful time in the Lord, again, with more good music and singing. We have it at each of our services. And every Sunday night, it's a different topic that we cover. And what a blessing this can be to you. And friend, I hope you enjoy the Ernest Angley Hour. And if you have received a miracle or a healing through this Jesus ministry, if you enjoy the program, we'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you've received from the Lord. You can send in your testimony by email to testimonies at ernestangley.org. Well, again, I say I hope you enjoy today's program. We look forward to seeing you next week. And always remember, friend, you are special to God. Are you enjoying the anointed music, singing, and preaching on this program? I want to let you know it is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Ernest Angley World Radio. Go to our website to listen or download one of our apps. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you have an internet connection, you can listen. Ernest Angley World Radio, a voice to the world. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.